In this short video, I'm going to share with you five cool camera tips to help you not only get more from your camera, but also help you enjoy using your camera more and of course help you take better photos. Hi, Paul here from Photo Genius. Now in this video, I wanna share five cool camera tips to help you take better photos with your Canon camera. But please stick around if you've got a Nikon, Fuji, Sony, Pentax or whatever, because these tips will apply to most current DSLR type cameras or mirrorless cameras. Now, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I post weekly uh, photography tutorials, I share photography tips, and I do occasional reviews as well. You can subscribe by clicking on the little icon down in the bottom right-hand corner. Okay, five tips to share, plus stick around to the end for a bonus tip. Now the chances are, if you've got a camera like this Canon camera here, when you press the shutter button halfway down to focus, your camera beeps, like this. The beep is your camera indicating that it has successfully focused. And for that reason, I quite like it. So with my cameras, generally the beep is turned on. However, some people don't like the beep. They find it annoying and that's fine. So there is an option to turn it off. Wildlife photographers don't like beeping cameras. Wedding photographers don't like a beeping camera. And neither do I if that beep is going to attract attention to me or maybe annoy other people around me. So it's good to know that you can turn this beep off. On a Canon camera, you can turn it off simply by pressing the menu button, going to the main camera settings, selecting beep and going to disable. Now the beep is turned off. But of course, with the beep turned off, how do you know now that the camera's successfully focused? Well, there is a visual sign to look out for. When you're looking through the viewfinder, taking a picture, and you press the shutter button halfway down, if you've got a Canon camera, you'll see that in the bottom right-hand corner of the viewfinder, there is a dot that appears. If you've got a Nikon camera, it's bottom left, and with some of the other cameras, it might be top right. That dot is the visual equivalent of the beep. Really useful. Now you may have noticed that sometimes when you take photos, probably during uh, the evening or maybe at night time, that there's a bit of a delay before you can see your photo. Long exposures, when the shutter is open for an extended amount of time, can cause the camera sensor to overheat, and this can result in grainy looking images, which we call digital noise, and this is something we tend to try and avoid. So there is a feature built into most cameras called long exposure noise reduction or something very similar. Now this means that if you do say for example a 10 second exposure, you'll have to wait another 10 seconds afterwards to see the image. In that second 10 seconds, the noise reduction is working its magic. Now this can be a useful feature, but also it can be quite frustrating. Sometimes when I'm doing long exposures and I've waited 30, 20 seconds to take a photo, I don't want to wait another 20, 30 seconds to see the image. So this is a feature of course that can be turned off and I'll show you how to do it on the Canon camera. Now to turn this feature off, we simply press the menu button, we scroll through to the custom settings and scroll down to custom functions. Pressing the set button gives us some options. You will need to scroll left or right until you see long exposure noise reduction. Press the set button, select off, press the set button again, and it's done. Once done, press the menu button or the shutter button to get out of the menu. Long exposure noise reduction can be a useful function, but it's just not for me for two main reasons. Number one, I don't like the delay. I want to be able to take photos and review my photos straight away. Number two, and this is probably the main reason, I'm choosing to shoot raw images. I edit those images in Adobe Lightroom. And with that program, you can usually fix any digital noise anyway quite easily. So that's why I like to turn this function off. Now with a digital camera, we have two options. When it comes to taking a photo, we can use the live view, which is the screen, hold the camera at arm's length like so, compose and take a photo. I use the live view generally if I'm using the camera on a tripod. The rest of the time, if I'm not using a tripod, I've got the camera up at the eye and I'm looking through the back of the camera. This is called the viewfinder. And this is the traditional old school way of using a camera. 
Now, did you know, you can adjust the viewfinder so when you look through the back, you get a nice clear view. Now this is particularly useful for people that maybe wear glasses, but choose not to wear their glasses when taking a photo. But look, regardless of whether you wear glasses or not, this is something everybody should check at least once. To adjust the viewfinder, all you've got to do is turn the tiny little dial that's tucked into the side of the rubber eyepiece on the Canon, it's over to the right here. So, here's how I suggest you do this. Turn your camera on. Pop the camera up to your eye and press the shutter button halfway down. This will wake the camera up and you will see some numbers displayed in the viewfinder. Traditionally, they run along the bottom of the viewfinder. Make sure your eye is resting against the eyepiece so you can see the whole frame. Now, do those numbers look sharp and clear? If they don't, reach out with your left hand and start turning the little dial until the numbers are nice and clear. This is called adjusting the diopter. It will adjust the viewfinder. Mo Sadly, it won't make your photo sharper, but will give you a better experience when looking through the viewfinder. Now, are you having trouble trying to get your camera to focus? There's a number of reasons why this might be occurring, but one of them, and probably the one I see the most, is simply you might be too close. This happens a lot with people that like to photograph things close, like doing macro photography, maybe taking photos of flowers, etc. Um, look, if I get this camera really close to this screen and press the shutter button halfway down, you may hear this weird whirring sound. That's the lens hunting. It's trying to focus, but it can't. If I pull the camera back a bit, we hear the beep. Yes, I've turned the beep back on. The beep tells me the camera's focused, so I was simply too close. So the solution sometimes, it's so easy, is just to pull the camera back. Now here's something you might not know. Every lens has its limitations, and often this is printed on the lens. If I turn this lens over, there's a little bit of writing on the bottom here. It says macro, 0.25 meters, 0.8 feet. That is telling me that if I get inside of those numbers, this lens will not focus. Every lens has its limitations and it's usually shown somewhere on the lens, on the bottom, on the side, or sometimes on the front. And it's usually shown uh, with the word macro or a flower symbol, which is the common sign for macro. Now, another thing to mention, just because it says macro on the side of this lens, it doesn't mean this is a macro lens, far from it. It's just telling you that if you go inside of these numbers, if you go any closer than these numbers, this lens will not focus. Now, of course, you might not be into macro photography, but still your camera's struggling to focus, even though your subject is further away. The ultimate solution, if your camera is struggling to focus, is to focus yourself. It's the old fashioned way of doing things, something that we did before autofocus came along. On the side of the lens, on this Canon lens, there's a switch, AF, MF. If you switch this to MF, manual focus is turned on, autofocus is turned off, and this means that you do the focusing yourself. Now, don't get focus mixed up with zoom. There's two things I can adjust on this lens. The large ring here is the zoom ring, and down the end of the lens is my focus ring. So, all you do, and it's very easy, is you look through the viewfinder, and you adjust the focus until what you see is sharp. Take your picture, and if you're happy with what you've got, switch the switch back to autofocus afterwards. Super easy. Now when I'm taking pictures, I'm always thinking about composition. For example, if I'm doing a landscape photo, I wanna make sure that my horizon is actually horizontal. I wanna make sure my verticals are vertical, and I also like to think about a composition rule called the rule of thirds. If you don't know what that is, I've done a separate video on it, I'll put a link below the video. Now sometimes I'm not taking pictures with a DSLR camera, sometimes I'm just using my iPhone. Now I've turned what are called grid lines on, so when I turn my camera out on I get these grid lines and that helps me keep my horizons horizontal my verticals vertical and it's also a little reminder to maybe use the rule of thirds now with the Canon DSLR camera you can do the same thing to set up the grid lines all you need to do is go to the menu scroll through to your camera settings and down to grid display there's a couple of different options I'm choosing grid number one now once this is turned on and you enter live view, you will see the grid lines appearing on the screen. So you can use these to, you've guessed it, keep your horizons horizontal, your verticals vertical, and also make you think a bit more about your composition. 
Now if like me you also like taking photos with your iPhone, I'll put instructions on how to turn the grid lines on down below the video. So I've shared with you five cool camera tips, you've made it to the end of the video so you deserve a bonus tip. And this tip centers around the Q button. On the back of a Canon camera there's a Q button, think of Q for quick. This button allows you to select and change some of the key functions of the camera. So for example, I'm going to press the Q button and change the white balance settings. Now the traditional way of doing this is to select Q, select the function you want to change, press set, and then scroll through the different options. But here's my bonus tip. To make it easier and quicker, simply press Q and turn the dial on the top of the camera. This will allow you to also select the function you want. When you've selected the one you want, just press the shutter button lightly and it locks it in. This also works in live view. So, a cool little tip, also a time saver. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I post a video every week, photography tips, tutorials, and reviews. If you've got a question, you can post your questions, comments, suggestions down below. I hope to see you sometime soon. See ya.